Thanks. Good morning. Um, so far, uh, we almost explained the title. So in the first lecture, we explained what are proper groups. Uh, in the second one, we explained what the orbit method means. And the last term that I need to explain is what certain means. So that's going to be the first part of the talk today. And then we'll move to the orbit method. So what kind of groups are we, proper groups are we dealing with? Um, let's start with um, um, what Penn proved yesterday, that if you look at PZP, and you take the exponential map, it converges, um, and it gives you a map to the one units inside the, the static integer. So these are the vertebral elements in ZP star, which have one as a. Um, and he proved that for a for P odd, this map is a converges and it's a homeomorphism, in fact. And in fact, it's, it's, it's a, it is an isomorphism of topological groups, tropic groups. Um, for P equals to two, um, we just need uh, to take a higher power of prime two, and you get the same result. And if you look at matrices over these rings, so instead of just having this one rank one free module, you look at matrices over ZP by D matrices, and you multiply them by P. So again, as a, as a module, this is just isomorphic to the free ZP module of rank D square. And you repeat the process then you will get an isomorphism same way. Uh, sorry, this will be a topological uh, isomorphism. It will be a homeomorphism. It will no, no longer um, be algebraic because this is an abelian group. This one is not. And similarly, this is for P, for P odd and um, even the same thing. And the proof is just look at this proof, just remember this proof, and observe that the norm that you define on, on matrices is also ultra norm, and you multi multiply matrices, nothing bad happens topologically. Just writing it down, I will not do it. Um, but these are the, this is a prototype of the groups that we're going to consider, and you prefer uh, keeping an example in mind throughout the rest of the talk, just keep this example in mind. I will now introduce other families of groups, but this is already a large family, an interesting family, this example in mind. What do we have here? We have um, Leering, free Leering over ZP. This is isomorphic to Z P B square as as a module. If we call it G, then we have here a Lie ring with a structure using the visual commutator, and here we have a, a proper group, and the exponential map is a homeomorphism takes this Lie ring into the group, and that's the prototype that we are going to. Now, generalize. So, yes, yeah. So the, the the relation is always going to be in whatever is coming now. A good comment uh, using the Campbell-Hausdorff series that we introduced yesterday. So, the group structure here is completely determined by the least structure here. Uh, we we we. So it algebraically um, yesterday, and we only needed to 
worry about convergence, and now we have the convergence, and so um, this uh, group structure is coming from the least structure, and kind of the more involved direction is that one can go backwards. So now we are going to define a family of tropic groups such that you can go backward and you have an equivalence of categories between certain type of leerings and certain type of tropic groups. So we are heading. So, um, so in what follows, um, all groups and leerings are finitely generated. The, the, the leerings that will come here are always over ZP, always ZP leerings are finitely generated and torsion free. So here's a, all, all leerings as modules, they will look just like ZP to some power. Um, so now we'll have here a, a group and leering. And the first family is, is not really a family, I'm just introducing it to be um, compatible with the paper of Roger Howe who started this whole business. So he um, introduced, introduced the following lattices or groups which he called EE, standing for elementary exponential. And the Leerings that he consider are just leerings that sit inside E, the beta, inside matrices. So it's very similar to this structure here. Actually, he did it a little bit more generally, but I, I don't want to um, go in that direction now. Um, so he replaced ZP with a ring of integers of an extension of QP, of the periodic integers. And P can be replaced by the uniformizer. And there is a certain restriction on the power beta to make sure that this series converges and the Campbell-Hausdorff series converges. So this is just to, to, to bring how into the picture. I, there's no reason for me now to specify the details here, because they are going to be subsumed by, very soon by other groups here. So, um, here we look at groups G, and they will be contained in So this was in House Paper 77. The um, second family um, is going to be uniform. Groups and leerings. Um, and a uniform leering um, is finitely generated torsion free leering that satisfies that G, commutator of G with itself contained in And similarly to the twist we had in the plot for T equals to two, if P is two, or not two, or P equals two, you replace this two, you can guess. Two square, yeah. So this is a uniform earring. Um, and the analogous definition for the group is um, the two commutator. So I need a multiplicative version of this PG, and this is just P power. So 
So these two conditions, they are called, and again, for p equals 2, you need to put here 4. Um, this, these two conditions, they, they are called powerful. Um, a, a group G without these conditions is called powerful. This is a term that was introduced by uh, Lubotsky. Man. Seven. And uniform um, is a terminology that came uh, in the book of Dixon. The toy. Man. And Seagull. In. 91. Um, and the last family is the family of saturable copy groups. Um, this was introduced by uh, Lazard. And interestingly, this was in 65. And um, uniform groups and powerful groups, this was a kind of a more algebraic version to what Lazar did. And for some time, I, I'm, I'm soon going to give the definition here, but for some time it was believed or unclear whether two families are the same, but they're not the same, so this is a more general. I will soon give an example that separates mainly these two. Um, so what is a saturable group? It's a group that comes with a evaluation map, map from G to open interval one over minus one infinity. Um, with certain properties that we'll list now, and a leering is that well, there is a map from the Leering open interval, one P minus one, infinity, certain properties. So what are the properties? Um, first one is that evaluation of X is infinity, even only if X is one. Evaluation of x y inverse. Evaluation of x and evaluation of y. Evaluation of a group commutator. Better. Some of the evaluations and y. Um, evaluation of x to the p is greater or equal to evaluation of x plus 1. So we have uh, four addition, and the fifth one says that um, for every x in G such that evaluation of x greater than p over p plus 1, there exists a p root for x. So there exists y p, y to the p. And so a group that, a, a, a proper groups that is equipped with an um, evaluation map, is called saturable. And Lazard actually uh, didn't worry about finitely generated, or, but, but here we are finding ourselves to finitely generate. Um, so this, this is, these are the properties of evaluation for the group. And now I need to tell you what are the properties of the evaluation of the Lie algebra. So you just look at it and make it additive. 
let's see. Evaluation of zero is infinity. Evaluation of x minus y is greater than this minimum. Evaluation of the Lie commutator greater or equal than sum. And evaluation of p times x greater or equal than one. And for every x in the Lie algebra with evaluation of x greater than p over p minus one, there exists y such that p times y x. So just just write it additively. And um, already you see that there's some confusion already here. Um, for granted that you think about the group commutator here and you think about the Lie commutator here. So either I'll kind of decorate things by L and G uh, to distinguish these two, or it will be clear from the context. So here's an example. Um, so P M D Z P is um, elementary exponential for P greater than five and P M D Z P is uniform for P greater or equal than three. Um, and this, this is not really important because Roger's how Roger Roger Howe's definition was aimed at getting to the goal, and and he took just the nicest family that he could work with, and indeed his proofs are very short because he chose a convenient environment. So it's not that really there's a, um, something very special here. It's just a choice that that that. He made, but the the more serious difference is is here, um, which still might be small for an outsider. But I will explain why it is important. So here's a group um, taking something that contains a group it will be um, elements M D Z P that have P um, yes, but in his paper he doesn't give the detail and, and somehow the, it, 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 it's really clear that he that was what he needed. So and now you know we, we know because you'll see I mean you will not see the details, but uniform groups are also um, Campbell House of Campbell House of Sears converges, so so you you can. Yeah, this convergence issue. Yeah, that's all. yeah, it is, it, that's all. But these details are not given, so I don't know what Roger Howe had in mind exactly when when he computed this. The point is that the, the um, exponential map and the Campbell House of Sirius, they work in this generality. That's the point. So both in these two cases, it's not the sharpest place you can go. Um, so you take a group, uh, a leering, which is, yeah, so I'm giving you the leering here. Um, so this is similar to, to this um, p, p times anything you want. But above the diagonal, you can have everything, any, any periodic number. So this group is a saturable or um, p greater or equal to and p greater than plus one. This is an example that uh, Benjamin Klopsch gave. And 
This was the first example that kind of separated between uniform and saturable. So this is just elements, or maybe I'll write it a little bit differently. Let me write. So PZP, PZP, PZP. But above the diagonal, you can have any number. It doesn't have to be divisible by P. Okay, so below the diagonal, everything is, the, is, is a periodic number that's divisible by P. Here, all the, all the numbers are divisible by P. Here, here just below the, the diagonal, on, on the diagonal, they're divisible by P, but otherwise they don't have to be divisible. So this was an example that separated between saturable and uniform uh, groups. Um, and why would one care about this group? If you, if you want uh, to talk about representations of um, want to talk about representations of GLD, P say, or SLDZP, or any algebraic group over the periodics, then we don't have um, a, a method to deal with these groups directly, like the linguistic. The linguistic theory deals with just the top layer, things that factor through the finite group over the finite field. But for these groups, there's no general method. The orbit method is the probably the only thing that we have at the moment to say something. And we can say this is not a proper group and say things about proper subgroups. So this group over there, one plus P, M, D, Z, P, the groups that, yeah. Um, this is exactly the quotient that give GLD FP. And if you want to go from this group to GLDZP, you need to use, say, Clifford theory or any other technique. Fine. Um, but if you exponentiate this lattice, so let's call it H, and if you exponentiate it, what you get is the pro p silu subgroup of GLDZP. Is to say, in this quotient, this is exactly the um, uni unipotent upper triangular matrices. This is the p silo. This this quotient is exactly the p silo subgroup in um, is one on one over an FP over here and and zero inside the group GLD. FP. So this quotient, you exponentiate this group, then you get um, ones on the diagonal and things in ZP above the diagonal and things divisible by P below the diagonal. The quotient of this group modulo this group is exactly the P0 sub P0 subgroup of GL DFP. So this group is the proper serial subgroup of this group. And so that's the maximum you can go with the orbit method. There's no, you cannot go beyond the orbit method with that because we only have it for, for big groups. And what the orbit method for Satterbull group says, it says that indeed we can deal with these, with these groups. So it might look uh, a small, um, Difference, but it makes it makes a difference. Um, again, you can think about this example all the time now. Because not what I want to do now, ah, before before I go to the orbit method, um, I want to say a few words about um, the way back. But I really will say very few. So the theorem of Lazard. says that the map going from uh, earrings saturable finitely generated to um, 
trophy. That's what it was. Sending a living with um, addition, D bracket, and valuation. Okay, so suppose I start with a saturable leering. So I have this algebraic structure, the addition, the abelian structure. I have the leak commutator, and I have this valuation. Then I can send it to G star. Now, what I mean by G star, I mean, think about the same set is the leering as, as a set. But the structure here is coming from the Campbell host of series. So um, A star B is H A B. And um, with the same valuation. This is an equivalence of category. Okay, and there's some, some things I would like to say on the way back here, but maybe I'll leave that for discussion afterwards because um, I think I'm behind schedule. So, finally, um, the orbit method. I'm going to put a few names here. Um, Lales. Lales. So you will not find such a theorem anywhere. This is Roger Howe's theorem from 77. Hiking's paper is from 2005. John Gonzalez's theorem is from 2007, where Howe is treating the elementary as exponential case. Hiking the Piran is treating the uniform case. By the way, here, always P is not two. It's been excluded right from the beginning. Hiking is doing the uniform case all group for all primes. And here, this is for Catrubel. Um, again, P is not two. And um, everything here is, again, finitely generated. Finitely generated. Torsion free. Um, this is subsumed in some of these definitions, but just to make sure that we are there. Um, yeah, and here there's one more technical condition which says that gamma minus one B is contained in B. So you, what you see is that it gets very technical towards this area, very simple-minded here. And in fact, the, the way the proof goes is that uh, the architecture of the proof is coming from, in all cases, is coming from house paper. So this is why I think this is one big theorem. So the structure of the proof is coming from here, and then the refined details are coming from. Uh, I should say this is the, um, the derived series, yeah. The lower central series of commutators. Um, okay, and the theorem is that if G is yeah, any, any definition that you want, then uh, there exists a bijection in the irreducible representations of G 
and co-joint orbits on the Lie algebra. Now, if you remember, in the previous uh, lecture, we, here we had the, the dual, the linear dual of the real numbers when we, when we discussed uh, Kirillov original work. Um, but very quickly, when we wanted to apply things to, to representations, we, exp we took the exponential map, the usual exponential map from the real numbers to the torus, and from every linear functionals that we had, we produced a linear character. And here we do it from the beginning because it's the, the, the dual is, is more complicated. So here we're taking G, uh, we check the, the contra-agin dual of G as a, sorry? This is a discrete group, right. So, so if, if, if G is ZP, the Pontryagin dual uh, is QP mod ZP, but I'm not going to go into the details, but you see already the difference between the real numbers, um, the real num num numbers case and this case. So the real numbers, they are self-dual, both when you take linear dual and when you take the Pontryagin dual. So the Pontryagin dual of the real numbers is the real numbers again. So here we're taking continuous character of G, thought of as an abelian group, into, into the torus. That's the only uh, difference in statements, please. Okay. That's right. Here, um, we are talking about, uh, referring to my first talk, we are talking about continuous representations, always. G is, uh, is compact, and therefore, uh, continuous irreducible representations are finite dimensional. For any compact group, the representations are unita unitarizable, so you can think about it unitary. But moreover, and yeah, thank you for this question, because now I can remind you that the irreducible representation, the continuous irreducible representations of a prof P, of a profinite group, they always factor through finite quotients. So what we are dealing here with really is representations of finite groups collected in a, to one object, which is the profinite group G. But very soon we can descend to finite groups. Yeah, so thanks for that. Okay, so here's a sketch. So we do start as, I mean, even, even the proof is going to go um, in the same way that Kirillov's original work going. So we, uh, we want to attach to uh, an orbit an irreducible representation. So let omega be an orbit. And let's take phi and omega. So what is phi? Phi is a, a map from um, the E ring into the torus, which is uh, additive homomorphism and continuous. So as an additive group, G is just isomorphic to ZP to the D. And continuous characters, they always factor through finite quotients. So what you really see here is functions from ZP modulo, Z modulo P to the KZ to the D into T where we go over all the all Ks. That's the thing that comes in. Um, and then we build the by linear form from G, 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 taking a pair x, y to the value of P, x commutator with y, um, P evaluated on this commutator. So what we get here is a complex number, P, the in its circle. 
And now, similarly to what we had in the real case, this is um, alternating by linear form. This is alternating because this is a Lee, Lee bracket. So, alternating. Ohm. Then we can look at the radical. So let uh, R be the radical form. That is collection of elements in B such that B phi of X D. We used to have zero, but now it's one. That's the just because we go to the complex now. Um, now a claim, which I will not prove, is the following: um, R is saturable. Um, and there exists uh, an H in E. Which is um, saturable and polarizing. I know that this definition is uh, how to take at first time, in a second and maybe more. So don't worry about saturable here. The only thing you need to think at this point um, is that we are in the game. We are getting Lie, Lie algebras or Lie rings that we can then exponentiate to, take, to get groups and so we can keep the machine going. Um, polarizing um, and uh, maximal. Um, it's not. It's not. This is, this is, a, this is a claim. Uh, the point is that the roots that you get there, they should be inside your object, right? You have roots, but they might, you, yeah. So um, that's um, one, that's the second thing. Right, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, and then, and then, um, The index of H, and H contains R, it's immediate, and the index of G in H, the same as the index of H, R. Um, and third thing is that if I'm taking the character phi, so remember phi is a one-dimensional character of G. Um, I, I, let me not write it again. But so phi, phi is a character of the Lie ring, additive character. So everything is finite here. So what happens is that once this phi is continuous, its kernel is is a finite index, and everything that happens is above that kernel. So. so H has finest index in G, and similarly R in H. So these are just finite, everything is finite. Now, P is a character of the Lie algebra. Maybe I'll, I'll already draw the diagram. It will be easier to follow. So here we have G. Um, we are now, we, and we have the, the radical, and phi is a character of G. And from the second item of the claim, we have this H, which sits in the middle of G uh, and R. Um, now I can restrict phi to H. These are all saturable, so I can exponentiate them to get groups.
Also, remember by this um, theorem that I raised of Lazar, I don't need to think about really exponentiating. It's the same set. This is, this, can be, this is the identity map, if you want. But here I'm thinking, on this side, I'm thinking about it as a group. And here, here I'm thinking about it as a Lee, the Lee ring. So I can think about this function as sitting here. Same function. Same function sits here. Let me denote it now by, by h just to psychologically to feel that I'm, I have a function on, the, on, on a group now. And now this function is, um, is a class function. on H. So remember that phi, this is a linear character. This goes to, to phi star. Um, but when we get here, it's, it is not guaranteed that this is a linear character. It is a class function, but it may not be a character. So, and that's where this condition comes in. And with this condition, um, maybe a slightly stronger version of that. Let me not get into that. Um, so phi h is, is a class function. And under some condition, that depends on the, on the other condition. So now we look at this um, function. And whenever I have a, a class function on a group, I can find a class function, sorry, a class function on a subgroup, I can define a class, a, a function on, on the group, uh, usually denoted in representation theory by dot upstairs, which, which is extension of phi h by zeros. So phi h dot is a function on g, which is the same as the original function g is in h and it is zero otherwise. Okay, so again, what did we do? We took a linear character of this abelian group, which happens to be a Lie ring, but it's, it is just a linear char character. We restricted to this subalgebra that we chose carefully with respect to. Um, everything here is, is polarizing um, with respect to phi. So everything here depends on phi. Um, so we take the restriction. We think about it as a function here. It turns out to be class function. And we are now considering this function. Which need, yeah, exactly. Um, and Again, let me emphasize that everything here, you can think about it as finite. Because um, you can take the kernel of phi, and that's a finite index subgroup here. And you can just look at the quotient. Nothing happens below the kernel of phi. So although these ob I don't want to introduce more notation. So although these objects are proper groups, everything is, is, is finite here. Um, and by the way, if you here uh, look at k be the kernel of h, then you get dot up. So the orbit method gives you a way to put your hands on these dot uppers that are now going to give representations of g. So. Um, So here's a lemma. Um, we'll surely not have time to show you everything. So um, what I want to do now is maybe I want to define Things. One of them is 
T omega and function. So remember that omega is the orbit, so I can look at this function, one over the square root. Um, elements, the orbit. Um, so these are all linear characters of G, but we took them in, in, in an orbit. So this set is invariant under the, G the group conjugation. And so this is a class function. It's a sum of characters here, but it defines a class function here. Um, the class function. And phi omega 1, phi omega 2, in the product is 1, they are equal, 0 if not. The reason is also easy. Characters of an abelian group, they are orthogonal to each other. This is a, a sum of characters. And omega 1 and omega 2, they contain sums of disjoint characters, and they are orthogonal. So these functions, they are class functions, and they are orthogonal. Um, and the claim is So psi is, a, is an element in the orbit. I'm just going, I, I want to keep phi for the specific one that I chose, and now psi is a, is a generic one. Sorry? This is on the Lie algebra, but it, also, it is also on the group. So as, as function on the Lie algebra, this is a, these are sum of characters of, of, on, the, on the Lie algebra. As function on the groups, they are class function to begin with, but they are also orthogonal because they are orthogonal on the Lie, when you think about the Lie, Lie algebra. Sorry? Omega, the orbits are finite, yes. So this. It has to do with the uh, Amritanchu's remark that uh, the, the dual is discrete and, the, and the, the, the orbits are finite. You're right, yeah, so. Um, okay, and so the claim is, is that um, P omega is the character It's not only a class function, it's a character of the induced representation from H to G of phi H. It's exactly this phi H that we've been talking about. And the reason I introduced this phi dot is because now I want to compute this induction and I will need this function. Okay, so let's see. Let's call the character of this. Uh, um, representation, let's call it chi. So what is chi? What is chi of g? Um, is the sum over, um, by the definition of the induced representation, it's over the transversal set in g modulo h um, of p dot, let me move the h here, of no, let's keep it um, of T G T inverse. That's the definition of the used character. Now I need um, maybe a better way to write down this function. So I want to claim that um, function. Now it's more convenient to think about it in the Lie algebra. Phi h dot of x. I want to claim that this is the sum over 
Um, the transversal elements in H modulo R of the factor here. Um, of by S, so that means S S inverse. So I want to claim that I can rewrite this extension. So here we took the function phi h and we extended it by zeros. And this is slightly inconvenient. We want to rewrite it in terms of just characters. And um, so I want to claim that this is um, this is the way to write it. Write it down. Um, and here, what hides in this uh, this um, statement? The following. Will I get five more minutes? Are you, are you okay with five more minutes? Um, even then I will not finish, but, uh, sorry? Um, okay, um, so I want to claim that you can rewrite this function this way. The reason is that if you look at the set of elements, um, which are H conjugates of our original phi, where H is in H. This is the same as elements C in the characters of G that agree with phi. So what's written here, this set, is exactly what's written here. So we, to, to conjugate with an element of, of H is exactly a character, is just have here. Um, but we, not, we don't need to conjugate with elements that stabilize phi, they will not contribute anything. Therefore, what's written here as H in HR is the same as going over S in H, cosets of H R in H. Because elements of R do not contribute. So the claim is that this set is the same as this set, which is one line computation to this, which I will not do now, but the point here is that this is exactly the orbit um, P with respect to elements in H. So this, uh, this set is in bijection with R. And what is this set? These are all the characters here that restrict to the same, that agree with P on H. Now, how many extensions do we have uh, here from H to G? So firstly, these are abelian groups, so any character extends. How many exactly the index of this group? And so, uh, the number of elements here, this is in bijection to, to this, um, index, but our assumption is that this index is equal to this index, the polarizing, and this also, this correspondence preserve indices. So one shows that this set is contained here, and then that, that then, then we have quality. Okay, so now we can finish the proof. Um, so again, instead, so what this statement here says that instead of running over um, extensions like, like this, I can run over conjugates. Um, 
Okay? And so what, what we have here is the sum of T universal in G modulo H. Now we replace this function P dot by this sum here. So we have here one over the index of G in H. And we have a sum over transversal of um, H of R in H of P. So we have this function, which is conjugate, conjugate by T with the dot here. But now we conjugate by S. So we go over all these conjugates and then we evaluate at G. So we have one set of conjugations coming from the transversal of G in a, H in G, and another set of conjugations coming from the transversal of R in H. Um, and all in all, that's what we get. But what is that? Transversals of H in G and transversal of R in H, they give you transversals of R in G. So all in all, we have here one over this normalizing factor. But what is this normalizing factor? This is exactly the square root of the index over there. So let me already write here omega and half. And then we have here sum of all the transversal t in t modulo r, and then phi t. That's the what we get here at the point g. But this is exactly running over the orbit. Okay, and so p omega is the character of this representation. And um, now we need to check the numerics to see that we got them all. One line, but I'll, I won't take more. And I will thank you.